Hello, welcome to IDD Talks. My name is Anastasia Lavrina and today we have a very special guest. Joining me now is Eric Vestrata, Director for Europe at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands. We're welcome to other University and to Azerbaijan. Thank you. Oh, it's, uh, we know that you are Azerbaijani and Turkish language skills are perfect. We had an experience of that, but this interview will be in English if you yes, don't mind. Of course, yeah. Well, uh, we are standing at a historical place, I would say, Tulip Power. Opening ceremony was done in 2023 at AD University, and it generates green energy, both wind and solar. Uh, let me start with a simple question. What do you think about this event? How this Tulip Power is important? Well, uh, I think if you look at the world, everybody nowadays understands that uh, climate requires action. Uh, I mean, we see it, our young people at school and in the Netherlands, they walk in the streets in demonstration, climate action now. Everybody understands that if you uh, want a future for your children, that you have to do something about climate. And this starts with small things. Uh, it's reducing hydrocarbons wherever you can. Uh, and there are alternatives. And I think this is a symbol to show that there are real alternatives, sun and wind. Uh, and I heard here in Bakke that uh, there is a lot of wind normally, not today, but normally there is a lot of wind in Bakke. And sun. Uh, and sun also. Uh, so you have free energy just from nature. Uh, and here it's for students, they can charge either their electric bikes or their phones. Um, and it's just a symbol that you can do things differently. And what I think is very interesting uh, is that we are now two years later and Azerbaijan is organizing COP29. Great. Uh, so a country that is traditionally a producer of hydrocarbons is showing to the world that also we understand that for the future we have to think further and we have to think about green and renewable and sustainable. And this is a small symbol of it, so I'm happy. I hope maybe we helped a little bit. Uh, to, to nudge and to show that you can do it differently. Right. Actually, I was planning to start with, um, to continue with another question, but you already partially answered the question about COP29. It's a great event which will take place in Azerbaijan in less than two months and which will bring together the experts, the policymakers from all around the globe. You already mentioned that Azerbaijan is very well known for its oil and gas. But now, year by year, we are starting to talk about green energy development. And I guess my country has already succeeded in some of these directions. Therefore, exactly. how two countries, Netherlands and Azerbaijan, may cooperate during COP29 and in the future, bringing and making the world greener? That's a very good question. And first, let me start with congratulating you, congratulating the people of Azerbaijan with the leadership that you have shown. Thank uh, you. Because I know how much work it is. Uh, and uh, there's, I think there's going to be 60 heads of state and government. Uh, they have their delegations. And then there's not only the government, but there's, only, there's also uh, companies. There's also knowledge institutions. So there's going to be thousands and thousands of people. So not only the logistics, just to make sure that everything goes well, but also the substance, because this is going to be at how are we going to continue for the future. Uh, and this time it's going to be a lot about financing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, how can we contribute also for countries who have less to spend but have the same problems? Uh, so, I think we're on a good way to prepare for the COP and we're on a good path to, uh, to come with, uh, with the final declaration, with the conclusion of this COP that will help the world one step further when it comes to uh, green energy and, uh, and, and, and combating climate change. Mm -hmm. um, but also because it is companies, because it's knowledge institutes, uh, there will also be a lot of discussions. Well, how do you do this? I mean, there is the government level, but then you have to do it practically. Stuff like this. Um, Small things which can break a big change. Yeah. And I mean, uh, this is here because we think we are good at wind energy. Uh, at, uh, because we uh, have a lot of wind, like I said, uh, because we are also, like Azerbaijan, we are bordering the sea. Uh, and, and we are using that wind, uh, so we have a lot of technology uh, that we think we can share with each other. I'm sure Azerbaijan has other uh, areas where they, so a sharing of technology, uh, sharing of knowledge, uh, because this world, it is too important to keep the knowledge to ourselves. We have to share it. That's for sure, especially after COP29, this is not only two weeks you should think about the future cooperation, how to bring practical skills yeah, uh, to, to the yeah. ground. Well, um, 
coming from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I should address a political question as well. Of course. How do you assess the current level of cooperation between two countries? Um, I think we're in a good place. Uh, I think if you look at the areas where we do cooperate, uh, I think it's a very broad area. So we already mentioned everything around uh, uh, sustainable development, green energy. This is a very important uh, area where we do cooperate, uh, but uh, it's not the only area. Uh, uh, the Netherlands is a, among one of the biggest investors in Azerbaijan, uh, and there's a lot of companies who are interested in many, many things. So also on a political level, we understand that the problems in the world are too big to face alone. Uh, for example, when it comes to uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, both uh, Azerbaijan and the Netherlands, we support Ukraine in their sovereignty and their uh, territorial integrity. So it's also the bigger world problems that you address. And we also try to see how can we work together to create stability everywhere in the world uh, and uh, also in our own regions. That's right. Um, beyond the spheres which you already mentioned, um, taking into account all of those geopolitical changes which we observe in the world day by day and the green agenda also, what kind of perspective do you see for the future partnership where you think we can do better than we have now? Uh, I think we have to. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, we ha have to also be frank about that, uh, that even in good relationships, it's not always easy. Uh, even uh, if I look at my own marriage it's not always easy because you love each other but still there are issues that you don't like about the other one and you talk about it and uh, maybe the other one doesn't really like it so then it can get a little bit heated but then over time you get back at normal again and i think we have had that as well and let's be fair about that that has been the case uh, but i think we're now in a place that we can very frankly and honestly talk about these things also where we disagree uh, and then i think you have a good basis to make further steps and to identify where can we find areas uh, where we can work together. Well, um, how do you see the post-conflict development in the region? All of those processes which we see here. Just recently, uh, there was quite a fruitful discussion in New York between uh, our minister and you are therefore. I think that there's still a, a very good understanding between two sides on the position in the region. I think our aim is the same. I think what we both want is stability and prosperity in this region, stability and prosperity in the South Caucasus. Uh, and then the way how to get there is not an easy way uh, because there's a history of 30 years, uh, there's recent history, there's traumas on both sides, there are difficulties that we have to overcome. But what I see now uh, is that uh, both Azerbaijan but also Armenia share the willingness to start and to continue because you have gotten very far uh, uh, a comprehensive peace agreement where you say, okay, these are the conditions under which we can agree. And uh, I think a lasting peace would contribute enormously, tremendously to a stability in the region, uh, but also to prosperity in the region, because it would mean a lot for connectivity. It would mean a lot for economic activity. Uh, so uh, we really hope uh, that uh, the two of you will be able to find a solution that will satisfy both sides and then will contribute to the wider region, to the stability, which will also contribute to the stability of Europe. Because uh, in the end, uh, this region is part of Europe. Uh, and that's why it's also in my European department in our ministry. Right, especially all of those projects, transport and energy, which is being offered by Azerbaijani government also can benefit Europe. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're very much welcome and thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you.